two major types of investments one is a venture capital investment or it could be a, a buyout and in both these forms of investment some capital is uh, invested in a private company that is why we call as private equity it's not a listed firm it's not uh, a public company in a private firm an investment is being made and for this particular investment an equity stake it's not a loan that is provided an equity stake is being taken by the private equity investment firms so the money that is typically um, invested by private equity firms is into various private companies they invest in various uh, private companies and take an ownership stake in each one of them and take an equity stake in each one of them probably the management for each of these companies may exist separately but from a financing standpoint this private equity firm will invest in these companies and have a very significant controlling uh, stake as a part of this investment so if they do this investment in very matured highly established companies in uh, and uh, probably buy out their public equity stake and convert them into a private because this investment is purely a private investment so if because of this investment their stake goes really higher and a public firm is getting converted into private we call those kind of companies typically as buyout firms whereas if this amount is invested if these companies primarily are new startups kind of companies and uh, this capital is invested in these companies for uh, an equity stake we call that form of investing as venture capital so whenever we talk about uh, the private equity investment they have to go into one of these two categories either investing in a very established uh, company and uh, turning it from a public limited to a private limited that is what we call as a buyout firm or a new technology startup kind of firms where this kind of investment can get in they are typically classified as venture capital investment both of them come under the category of private equity investments now how do these uh, private equity uh, firms here we have to differentiate between two words one is private equity firm the other is the portfolio company here the when i use the word portfolio company this these are the set of companies where the private equity firm typically invests these are that particular uh, companies where the private equity firm has invested they go as portfolio companies and uh, when i say private equity firm or sometimes we use the word private equity fund because many people might have contributed a capital which is invested in various of these uh, portfolio companies so we call that as private equity fund which is managed by private equity firm but whenever we use these word it is more associated with the capital whereas when i use the word portfolio company we are talking about the companies uh, uh, private companies where this particular capital is uh, invested so some of the ways this private equity firms derive the benefit out of their investments is one they have the capability to do a reengineering of each of these companies when i say reengineering they can work with uh, the business strategy they can change the lines of business of the products 
they can kill some of the products and uh, continue some of the product lines they can aggressively uh, promote uh, some of those lines of business they can do all kinds of operational restructuring they have very high profile people as a part of their team generally a good private equity firm apart from the capital they have very experienced and high profiled uh, people probably who might have worked as ceos and cfos of some other companies earlier so with that kind of an expertise they can really get into the restructuring of the firm where they are investing so if they are investing some capital in each of these three firms they can restructure the business restructure the operations so that exceptional performances can come up exceptional profits can come out out of those firms means they generally identify firms which have a, a potential to perform in case they are restructured properly and based on that they try to invest in those firms they have a very high uh, they have a very high qualified team who can uh, get into the successful restructuring of the firm's process but this entire restructuring is a very tedious exercise so predicting the future cash flows is highly uncertain because uh, it all depends on uh, how successfully they are restructured so as an external analyst it becomes very difficult uh, to really understand what could be the cash flows because of this restructuring exercise so the valuation using the discounted cash flow kind of an approach or any of those approaches which find the present values of the future uh, benefits and all any proxies on those lines will become very highly difficult to evaluate a private equity investment but one thing we have to appreciate here one way one strong way the private equity investors derive value out of their investments is they have the flexibility as well as the expertise to restructure the existing firm and and uh, generate the highest uh, possible profits which they are typically looking at and the second way they typically operate is through a heavy usage of leverage they have very good access to the debt financing because of they pay their debt on time so from their uh, from their risk assessment perspective they fall into a very least levels of risk so they can use the leverage and because they are very considered to be very less risky the cost of debt is much much lower for them so the overall cost of capital comes quite at a much lesser rate which means the scope for uh, generating the returns will increase quite drastically so they can use debt quite effectively because a public limited firm will have the problem in terms of using the debt heavily because uh, equity investors will treat it as very high risk whereas when it comes to this private equity you don't need to really uh, go to each and every very small time investor who would be looking for immediate uh, returns whereas when you look at a typical private equity investment the equity investor should typically look out for long term returns nothing much in the shorter terms so from that standpoint also it makes a lot of sense for the company to use debt more effectively and uh, get an uh, advantage with respect to cost of capital which will help them to generate higher returns as the time period uh, progresses and uh, most of the times what happens is the debt is in the form of either syndicated loans or high yield bonds so various banks come together to give them a loan or the company itself issues uh, high yield bonds means like uh, junk bonds which have very not so uh, high credit ratings so which means they end up uh, giving higher returns 
as a part of the high yield bonds that they are uh, issuing but the advantage is both of these whether it is a syndicated loan or a high yield bond both of them are secured uh, in the way they are repackaged to create either a credit uh, either a collaborative uh, loan obligation or co sorry collateralized loan obligation clo or collateralized debt obligation cdo resulting in a huge transfer of risk to the third party uh, uh, special uh, special purpose vehicles so from that uh, dimension also though they issue the loans though they issue the bonds or though they raise the loan they are highly secured by uh, you know, they are highly secured so which means they can access the capital quite comfortably but yeah very recently of late after uh, the great financial uh, crisis it has been uh, observed that debt financing for buying out the equity or uh, or complete purchases or for buy out transactions that access to the debt capital has slowed down so most of the times uh, even even today uh, uh the buyouts are there but buying out at a very high leverage that kind of uh, mechanism had uh, significantly reduced but that is one more way a private equity firm differentiate itself from a typical uh, public equity uh, investment and the third thing is with respect to public equity investments we have seen there is a very high possibility of the principal agent problem but here to a large extent the pe investors try to align their interests with the interests of the managers of the portfolio companies we'll see there are various ways in which the pe investors take care of the managers of the portfolio companies in some cases uh, it goes more in terms of uh, benefits to the Uh, portfolio company managers and in some cases it is more on the restrictions from their side whatever is the various mechanism they are typically getting into they try to align the management's uh, interest with respect to the their own uh, uh, interest uh, making sure that there is a win win situation and uh, a significant generation of profitability in the company so the pe firm they keep the stake of the management to be very high so management has to work to actually increase their stake in the company so management a lot of uh, benefits of the management are tied with the performance of the company rather than a fixed salary kind of an approach apart from that the pe firm itself offers the management ex uh, expertise because it is uh, having a lot of people with uh, very solid backgrounds so it itself can offer high levels of management expertise uh, to the portfolio company and uh, it even uh, comes out with a clause saying if the management uh, company fails to deliver as per the targets the portfolio uh, the the private equity investment company can even uh, control the operations of the portfolio uh, company also even such kind of uh, such kind of uh, clauses could be there as a part of an agreement and as i have already indicated earlier there is a possibility that the managers of the private equity uh, portfolio private equity invested portfolio companies can focus uh, a lot on long term capital projects also because uh, day to day uh, uh, day to day uh, shareholders uh, pressure and third party analysts uh, ratings and rankings do not apply to any of these uh, any of these companies so and that to this company is more of a restructured kind of a company the management has more and more flexibility in terms of implementing uh, projects which may not be profitable immediately but may result in high levels of profitability in times to come so that's where it is one more thing which i can mention here most of the time we see this private equity investments are allowed for 
only highly qualified investor and when i use the word qualified investor it could be in terms of the net worth probably someone who can uh, who has a net worth of minimum of 1 million or something like that only these kind of people can 